Lahaina's impact zone is five square miles that goes from communities from Puamana up to Wahikuli. The county says 2,200 structures were burned down in the fires and 800 were left standing. Our Diana Cole finds out what life has been like for those who are able to return to a home or business. An ordinary day at the beach is now extraordinary for many Lahaina residents. To hear the joys on the shoreline and people laughing and having a great time. I mean, look at them. This is about being normal. Famed waterman and Lahaina community leader Archie Kalepa is at Hanaka'o'o Beach in Vahikuli, running a free water skills program for Maui Keiki. He says it's his privilege to help his Lahui, his community, heal. What you see us doing today is helping us cope with mental health, finding a sense of normalcy, the joys of kids laughing, playing in the water. Kalepa was in California when Lahaina went up in flames. He didn't know if he had a home to return to. The, uh, the roller coaster ride of your house is gone, your house is there, your house is gone, was um, the plane ride back from Tahoe was a really long ride because it was um, anxiety, it was, um, you know, what's left. His was one of 723 homes that did not burn that day. The neighborhood directly behind him is mostly gone. Having a home and not having a community is something in itself. For us that were fortunate enough to have our homes, opening it up to provide comfort for, for others that lost their homes was really important. A towel for your neck. Cold towel, are you kidding? <laughs> Kalepa turned his house into a community center in the first weeks after the fire. And here, one year later, he's still working to help people rebuild their lives. Right now, we can rewrite this sale plan for Lahaina. A sale plan that can be a sale plan for all of Hawaii. From sale plan to God's plan. I think God's hand was over it. Less than two miles south lies the Apostolic Faith Church of Lahaina, where even the sign proclaiming Jesus' imminent visit withstood the August Inferno. The church only lost some shingles. The day of the fires, Pastor Billy Hahn and his congregation prayed. And we just pray, hey, Lord, keep everyone safe. You know, get them out, uh, get them out of the burn zone, get them, you know, to safety, spare their lives. We pray, hey, Lord, cover the oh, property, cover the church, blood, blood, and no evil harm or things to come near it. It would appear the Lord listened. The church operations were not impacted by the fires. It still offers a monthly service. The only problem is the water. The church has running water, but the members don't feel safe using it yet. Some of them have washed their hands and gotten a rash after. And of the 60 or so members, only one, Rosemarie Castillo, suffered in the fires. She's too traumatized to talk about it, but said we could. She called Pastor Han that day. And she's telling me, oh, she's hearing cars blow up and this and that. And, uh, you know, my thing to her was, hey, we'll leave the car there, get down to the church, you know. And uh, she ended up leaving the car there, but ran into, was one of those that ran into the water in uh, Lahaina Harbor uh, to escape it. Castillo lost her home, but amazingly, God provided her a place to live at the church. Her story strengthens her and her co-congregants' faith in the Lord, who works in mysterious ways. They keep finding comfort in prayer and hope the community they pray for benefits too. I pray daily that the Lord strengthen them all.
Maui County Mayor Richard Bisson says over a thousand housing units are being built across the county. He says the first homes in the heart of Lahaina are already coming up. Our policy right now is to repopulate and that's what we're working on and we're excited that uh, some folks are able to start to rebuild in the impact zone. Forty-six homes have permits, 96 more are pending. Twenty-one are already being built. This is faster than what the county initially predicted. We had told the public it would probably take two to three years before they could get any building permits. That's what we said in August, September, maybe even up until October. And we believe that to be true based on what other communities have experienced. With FEMA's help, the debris cleanup is ahead of schedule. 97% of residential lots are now cleared. Once their soil testing comes back, if it's clean, they can uh, request a permit. FEMA's cleared over 60% of the commercial buildings and thousands of burnt cars. Bisson projects the debris to be fully cleaned up in January. He says the biggest challenge to rebuilding has been infrastructure. The county expected water and sewer lines to take a couple of years to restore, but... We expect water to be restored by the end of August and the um, wastewater uh, by the end of January 2025. Bisson estimates the cost of rebuilding could be five or $10 billion. And with each home that goes up, hope grows. We want to concentrate on the, on the healing of our community. Healing that happens in a number of ways, from the beach, to the Bible, or anything else that brings a sense of normalcy. Among those who lost everything to the wildfires, more than 450 Lahaina Luna High School student athletes and 40 coaches. And our Mika Miyashima shows us how high school football provided a glimmer of hope to the community and brought them one step closer to healing. Football has always been a big part of this community. The football games are almost all the time like sold out with Lahaina Luna fans, like just everyone, everyone from Lahaina. I'm calling on a Tijada. I'm 18 years old. I just graduated from Lahaina Luna. Kaulana Tihara has strong roots in Lahaina Luna football. Even my dad guys and my uncle guys and my two older brothers played football. And we were all like water boys when everyone else was playing football. So we were always on the football field. A team captain, Kaulana had no idea how much his strength would be tested his senior year after the worst natural disaster in Hawaii's history delayed the start of the Luna season. We lost our home and then my, my grandma from my dad's side and my uncles that live with my grandma lost their home and then my other grandma from my mom's side, they lost their home. It was like the last home uh, to be burnt down. There's like stairs over there that went into the front yard. And then there's another stairs that went into uh, up where my house. Cause over here was like the garage. There'll be an upstairs part. And then like over here, there's like a balcony. There used to be like the laundry room over here. But then yeah, the avocado tree 
is that big stump right there. But over here, I think we had two plumeria trees actually, one over there and then one over here. More than 70% of the team's players were directly affected by the wildfires, and more than half of the coaching staff. We lost our family, family home that I was living in. I got four family members that, uh, you know, uh, perished in the fires. Donna is one of them, Donna Gold, my, my, my cousin, my other cousin, Colleen Jones. And then, of course, my mother-in-law, Virgi, uh, Virginia Dofa, and our aunt, uh, Luis Abihai. For head coach Dean Ricard, this memorial along the Lahaina Bypass holds a lifetime of memories and love. I see David Noeska and he's my classmate. We went to school since, uh, you know, uh, kindergarten and uh, Leroy Wagner right here. He grew up in the same neighborhood that uh, I grew up, Paunau, which is right down the road here. And we can go down this whole line and I can probably recognize half of the people here. And that's just the way the Lahaina community was. You know, everybody knew each other. At that point, n none of us thought about football. You know, everybody was, we just thought, we just thought about, we have no place to live. We lost everything. We lost family members, friends. So football was the, the last thing on our minds at the time. After the fires, four of the team seniors helped rally the team back together. Just getting like those lifting sessions in with all your friends and your teammates, that has like, really helped us after the fire, just seeing each other afterwards. It just gave us something to do and something to focus on. Lahaina Luna went on to dominate their first game of the season, beating the Baldwin Bears 42-0 on September 30th in Wailuku. Another step towards healing and normalcy, the team's first game on their home field. Lahaina Luda played their first home game back of the season on October 21st, taking on the Baldwin Bears and winning on their home field 28 to seven, just over two months after the tragedy. The community members didn't see each other for, for months up until this game. So it, it brought back the town again for that one night for three, four hours. It was overwhelming as far as a response of, yeah, we need football. Please welcome members of the Lahaina Luna Lunas. In a moment, they'll never forget. Lahaina Luna's coaches, athletic director, and four of the team captains represented Lahaina and all of Hawaii as honorary coin toss captains at Super Bowl 58. Team captains, Kolana Tahada. Morgan Bula Montgomery, Teva Love, and Kuala Watson. Getting to go to the Super Bowl in, in Las Vegas is really, really special. Our thoughts and prayers are with you and your family for a speedy recovery. It was absolutely a once in a lifetime experience. Congratulations and welcome to Super Bowl 58. Oh. This year was just being out there, getting out there, and showing our community that, hey, we can all do this together. Navigating the unknown and moving forward together with glimmers of hope, like this discovery for Kaulana's dad. He found two of his state rings. It was actually incredible. I don't know how he found that. Um, of course, they're a little like beat up from the fire, but they're still together. There's a little hope, you know, a couple homes are being erected. 
So I'm going to UH Manila and um, studying electrical engineering. I was thinking of, of walking on. My hope is just that the, the people of Lahaina can get back into their homes after moving so many times from hotel to hotel and just that opportunity to get back home and be grounded and, and once they get back into their homes and they can start and we can all start focusing on, on the future.